heat pump secrets. In today's video, I've got a lot of information I wanna throw at you. If you've never seen any of my videos before, my hope in this video is to kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse of the future. I think that as time goes on, whether it's air to air, air to water, geothermal, whatever the system is, we're gonna see heat pumps dominate the HVAC industry as we move forward. We're seeing heat pumps be introduced to new markets, areas that folks never considered heat pumps before. And I think there's a number of reasons for that we're gonna go over in this video, but we're also gonna go over a few things that you may not know about heat pumps and why they are going to dominate the technology and the industry as a whole in the future. So first of all, what exactly is a heat pump? Essentially at its core, all a heat pump is, don't let the name confuse you. A lot of people hear heat, and then they automatically assume things. And ultimately, just to break it down, all a heat pump is is an air conditioning system where there's usually some sort of evaporator coil, condenser coil, and compressor, refrigerant, all that good stuff. And so essentially, it's an air conditioner that does all those things, but it can run backwards. It has a reversing valve that can reverse the flow of that refrigerant, turning the evaporator coil into the condensing coil, and so on, so that that system can produce heat. And so for a number of years, they kind of got a bad reputation. So when they first came out, a lot of folks thought they were useless, and I think that there was a good reason for that. They didn't perform the best when it came to really cold temperatures. If it started to get close to freezing temperatures or below, they almost were rendered useless. And to this day, I have customers that will say to me, hey, I used to have a heat pump years ago and I swore I'd never have one again. I'd put my hand over the vents and the, you know, the heat coming out, it just wasn't very warm and I just swore I'd never have a heat pump again. But the technological advances that we've made just in the last 20 years, especially in the last 10 years with heat pumps, we're now seeing heat pump systems that can go down to very, very low temperatures, well below zero degrees Fahrenheit, well below freezing temperatures. These things can somehow pull heat out of the outdoor air and put warm air into the home. They've learned so much. They've got all these different types of technologies to make that happen. We probably won't even get into all of that in this video, but just ultimately you need to know that they've come a long way. And so let's dive into a few things. The first thing is, as we have gone on, we've seen inverter systems kind of take hold. If you go outside of North America, inverter systems and especially mini splits are all that you see installed. When you go to Asia and Europe, mini splits kind of dominate the market, especially when it comes to air conditioning. And I've always said in America, we like our gas guzzling cars and we like our ducted air conditioners. But even here, we're starting to see inverter systems become more of a thing. And I think that's going to continue as time goes on. The biggest problem I see with that is a lot of guys, a lot of pros, I say guys and gals, I would probably restrict that to just guys. Every woman I've ever hired at my company, they're usually smarter, they're usually harder working, and I would only employ ladies if I could. So I will restrict that to just guys. There's a lot of guys in our industry that fight all these new technologies. They don't even want to learn them. And they'll tell you all the reasons why they're horrible and why they think that we shouldn't be getting these newer systems. And honestly, some of their arguments are valid. Sometimes they'll bring up the discussion of repairs and how expensive things can be. But that doesn't change the fact that today we are seeing more inverter systems, more mini split systems installed than years ago. We're seeing them installed and somebody's got to work on them. So these guys that don't want to even learn these technologies, obviously that's a little bit of a problem. Either they need to get on board or someone else will. That's something you need to be aware of. I would not want to be anyone's guinea pig. I would not want to be the first customer that a guy installs this system for this type of technology for. I would never want to be anyone's first customer, you know? But that said, I think as time goes on and more folks do get on board with this, you're going to see systems that can do amazing things. You're going to see, obviously, systems that can go at very low temperatures. I've seen temperatures down into the negative 20s, negative 20 degrees, where these systems can still produce heat. And some of these systems, especially mini split systems, have no backup source of heat. They're not designed to have a backup source of heat. They have no electric heat strips or any sort of dual fuel technology. If they are working properly, installed properly, then that system will produce heat, even with it being super cold outside. Now you might say, well, Josh, why is this happening? Why are we even looking at different technologies and so on? The biggest reason is heat pump systems 
in some cases have been shown to be 50% more efficient than traditional heating and cooling systems, especially some of these higher end, high sear, communicating inverter heat pump systems, folks are seeing a big difference on their utility costs. And so one thing you should be aware of is there's a lot of incentives out there. There's a lot of government rebates and incentives to install some of these systems in your homes. Some of these incentives can offset the cost of installing a new higher end heat pump system. When folks use that math argument, when they'll say, well, yeah, you'll save money on your utility costs, but the repair costs are so high. With some of these incentives and breaks with the government, rebates and so on, it helps offset those costs. It helps with that math, right? And so let me throw a couple last minute things as we're wrapping up here at you that maybe you had not considered. The first thing is, with some of these heat pump systems, you can improve the air quality in your home. So if you had some traditional technology where you did not have air being pulled through the system, now you can install some of these indoor air quality products to improve the air that your family is breathing. Remove some of those particles and allergens and things that cause some of the respiratory issues that folks face, you can actually alleviate that or at least help with that. Another thing that's really cool is we are starting to see more technologies where you can use it for more than just heating and cooling your home, such as heating the water in your home. So instead of having a whole separate inefficient water heater, so not only are you attacking the biggest energy consuming appliance in your home being the heating and cooling system and trying to get more efficient there. But now when you start to look at things like the water heater and heating that water that you use in your home for showers and, and so on, and now making that more efficient, you're lo really looking at a significant savings on your overall utility costs. And the last thing I'll say is for those of you that watch our content that are very conscious about the environment and doing things that are gonna help our carbon footprint overall, we're starting to see systems that not only are they more efficient, not only are they using refrigerants now that are better for the environment, as time goes on, we're starting to see more of that, but we're also seeing companies look at things like your overall carbon footprint. Instead of having these extremely large appliances in our homes that disposing of those types of things in years past, was something that we had to consider. We're starting to see very compact types of components and equipment that are so much more efficient, but also the carbon footprint overall is just so much better. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. Do you have a heat pump system and have you seen a, you know, a difference in savings in your utility costs? Or is it something that maybe you're considering or not considering for one reason or another? I'd love to hear about that. And so if you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about the top three issues we see with heat pumps in the wintertime. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.